Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to a very snowy Great Britain. We don't normally get snow in this part of um, the Midlands because it's normally too hot with the big conurbations around us. And here we have the latest and last Malagasy F44.5 Mantella. This is the final one I'm going to be building, thankfully, as I've had enough of cutting and shutting the rear fuselages. The uh, export version of the F22 is, of course, a what if, but um, it's operated by countries like Madagascar who have deep pockets due to their oil um, reserves. So the other operator of the Mantellas is the Saudi Air Force, where it's called the Sultan, um, and the Israeli Air Force. Uh, now, the Mantella differs from the F-22 in that it doesn't have thrust vectoring. It still has the F-119 engines, but they are not thrust vectored. So to increase um, and keep the manoeuvrability similar, it has canards. Now, the canards make it slightly less um, low observable than the F-22. So it sacrifices a bit of its so-called stealth characteristics to um, deliver that manoeuvrability. And here we have, I think, um, the three big kits on the market. So we have a Hobby Boss one. We have a uh, Revell, which I think is Hasagari, which is this one, Dasha, the new one, the best one. And then we have two Italeri ones. Now, why do I say that the um, Ravel slash Hasagari one is the best? Well, it fits together the best. The fuselage on the top is one single piece. And unlike the Hobby Boss ones, the actual weapons bays fit the aircraft. The Hobby Boss one is absolutely awful if you're not modelling the weapons bays open. So Dasher is the latest. That's from the Grey Angry Dog Squadron. The Ravel one also comes with the late uh, configuration, such as this um, antenna here, whereas the others are possibly prototypes with um, sort of stick-up antennas, which obviously aren't as stealthy. So the Ravel slash Hasagari one is the one to get. It builds the best, it's the best looking, and it comes with the tinted canopy as standard. Um, how would I rate them? I would go... Ravel, Hasegawi, um, then Italeri, then last but not least, the Hobby Boss. Um, personally, I would say don't waste your money on the others. If you can find the Ravel one, get the Ravel one. It comes with all the extra decals that you need. It comes with the uh, strip lights, the slime lights as well, which I don't think the other ones all do. Um, and it's the latest configuration, so definitely worth getting. So this is D for Dasher. This is the last Mantella. Now, I wanted to do this with the canards kind of in a display position on the ground. Um, and I think it looks quite nice like that, like a gripping with those canards or a J20 uh, um, with the canards on display. Now, I've done two flying and two on the ground and that completes my flight. I've got two squadrons re represented here. I've got um, the running cat with bomb marks E squadron and the uh, Grey Angry Dog Squadron. So they're the uh, two main operators of this type. 36 will be in service and the Malagasy Air Force plans to increase to 54 um, Mantellas. The Mantella is absolutely crucial to their strategy. Uh, the Mantella is still a very low observable aircraft, even though it's a bit more observable than the F-22. It's a data linked into everything else. And if we look underneath this one, this is fitted with the Super Phoenix Pro Plus long range air to air missiles. Now, the Super Phoenix Pro Plus is an extreme long range of the Phoenix, so it gives these a hefty punch. Now, the Mantellas have also taken on a new role, and this Mantella here is demonstrating that. So, one of the uh, things that I wanted to do is to have the GBU 28 a deep penetration uh, bunker buster bomb in service. Now, my original plan was to put these on the uh, A5 Vigilantes. Um, however, the mission profile calls for flying at um, least medium altitude, probably higher actually to get the kinetic penetration and there's uh, some naughty nose arts gone on there. 
Um, and that puts the Vigilante at great risk because it's not a low observable aircraft. Now the Americans have got around this with the B-2 bomber using their latest bunker buster. But for the uh, Madagascans, the Watif Madagascans, they only have the GBU-28. And that needs a low observable platform to um, get the altitude within the enemy's air defence range, the integrated enemy's air defence range. So the obvious uh, aircraft to do this is the F-44.5 Mantella. So here is a GBU-28 uh, bunker buster. And on the other side, we've got a sniper pod for guiding it because it has to be done at altitude. And then underneath um, in the weapons bay, we've got an AIM-120 C6 and we've got the uh, GBU-39 small diameter bombs. Uh, those are glide bombs. Those are very useful for taking out SAM sites and for attacking um, uh, enemy integrated air defence from standoff distances. And that's the key with... Um, the the use of this um, bunker buster it is a real threat to sort of iranian bad actors in the area um, it could be used against the houthis who knows um houthis even but it keeps aircraft like the north american vigilante uh, out of harm's way um, so the mantellas have picked up that role of delivering this bunker buster um, the rest of their role is air superiority now they may not actually engage um, the enemy at all, but their radars, their ability to get within a range of enemy um, C4I platforms, uh, enemy AWACS, enables long range shooting of the Super Phoenix missiles and soon to be coming the AIM 174 missile. And what that does is it means that, that whilst they may never engage the target, the other platforms, which are at the minute the SU 30s, data linked in. Um, and soon to be the F-107s, the J-10s with the PL-21 missiles. They will pick off targets um, that the Mantellas identify, pass through the uh, Sentry AWCs. Again, that's another platform I need to build a replacement for. Um, and then they will get their kills by working as part of a data-linked team. That's how it all works in modern air combat. Um, you the Mantella is a perfectly good dogfighter. Um, however, it doesn't want to engage in that kind of fighting. It doesn't want to get within visual range. It wants to be using beyond visual range uh, technologies. So 36 of these in service, soon to be 54. I may go up to 72 of these because reopening the production line is obviously a massive feat. Now, one thing you'll notice with the Mantellas is that the markings are somewhat different across them. And that's basically just because of the fact that I've got a mix of uh, different aircraft types, different uh, manufacturers, and they all have slight discrepancies. Um, the Ravel Hasagawi one is the one to get. I tried to make this um, surface metallic and shiny by spraying the aircraft um, chrome first. It didn't really work because the minute I airbrushed the camouflage gray on it, it took away a lot of that um, metallic sheen and the bits that it did leave in metallic sheen I had to go over anyway because they didn't look good. Um, I just need to tidy up a couple of the others. These do get very weathered in service. They look pretty worn, pretty fast. Um, but there you go. The Mantella fleet, a flight of four representing two squadrons is complete. Let me know what you think. Take care. Goodbye.